Hey guys, this is the follow-up video to my Bahamas trip. So check out the part one. This is just my little view, review on tips, trips, recommendations, and things that you should probably know before you go. So just want to school you guys just a tad. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Warwick Paradise All-Inclusive Resort. So it was a very nice uh, resort. The lobby, underwhelming, but still nice. I have to say the staff there were great. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a great room. I was on the 12th floor. 1224 was my room number. So I was at, like in the corner, top floor, beautiful view. Like I had an amazing room. So with that, like I had to wait for my room when I got there. I arrived about 2.30. I didn't get my room until 4, but it was, you know, of course I was like tired and ready to like relax, but it was worth it because she gave me like a great room. So I was very thankful for that. Um, so nice resort overall. Um, one thing I will talk about, there's no nightlife after nine o'clock. So if you're a nightlife person and you're looking for things to do on the resort, this place is not it. Um, I, you know, I'm a vibrant young lady. I like to do things. I like to have some kind of shows, something going on. And especially I was a solo traveler. So, you know, I kind of look forward to the entertainment on the resort. And there was like none. Um, there's basically two bars there. One bar outside. That bar is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. That is the hog bar. It's outside by the, the pool area. Um, then there's one other bar in the lobby called Rum K. That bar opens from 6 to 1 a.m. So basically, if you're looking for things to do, the only thing that is really to do at night is the Rum K bar because there are only two bars there. The Rum K bar is kind of where everyone gathers around um, at night because there's really nothing else to do. They have um, like, it's called the Juggernu Beat. It's supposed to be their entertainment area. Um, where they, uh, I guess they're supposed to maybe have something going on there, but there's really nothing. And the Jiganu Beat is basically like on a good night, they may have karaoke. Um, they have like a couple's game thing they do, um, but it's not a lot going on there. The Jiganu Beat, that's basically the only entertainment area they have, and it's not always something going on there. I think my last night, I was there from Sunday to Thursday. I left on a Friday. Thursday night was like the only night they actually had like anything going on in there. Um, they did like a couples game thing and then they did some karaoke, um, which I was happy to get that because the whole time I was there, there was like no, there was nothing. It was just like crickets. So for me, it was a little frustrating to not have any entertainment after nine o'clock. Like I'm not someone that wants to, I don't even go to bed nine o'clock when I'm at home. So like for me, it was a little bit frustrating. So if you're looking for entertainment on the resort there, no you're definitely going to make sure you're going to have to have something planned outside of the resort um, if you're looking for nightlife entertainment. But I was only there from Sunday to Thursday. So I can only speak from Sunday to Thursday. Maybe on the weekends it's better. I don't know. Friday, Saturday is better. I don't know. But I can only speak for Sunday to Thursday. But I was like very underwhelmed with the entertainment. So I wrote myself some notes here. So you'll see me like looking down occasionally to like remember like and to hit like certain topics. So the first thing I'm gonna discuss are the taxis there. Make sure that you bring like enough cash with you. Um, I had some issues with cash. I thought I brought enough, but I did not. Um, the taxis there are very expensive. You'll have to um, kind of negotiate a little bit because they will try to like overprice the, the taxis. So I had a driver, um, to my hotel and he basically was giving me the game like before I even like kind of got settled he was like look I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks for the taxis make sure you're not paying any more than than $20 that's max I wouldn't even pay $30 is what he told me so that kind of gave me an idea of like what to expect with the taxis um, they will try to get over on you but sometimes you can talk them down so if you can talk them down at least make an attempt don't just go with the first price they offer you because they're they're looking at you to see will you go with it. Um, and there's usually like, if there's one taxi, there's usually a few others around. So don't be afraid to say no um, if you feel like they're trying to like overprice you um, with the taxi. One other thing I wanna say about the taxis. So there are going to be certain places where there really aren't any taxis around. 
So if you find someone, if you get a good taxi and, and, and the person's great and amazing, ask for their card. I almost ran into an issue while I was there. So Fort Montague, it was one of the ports that it was a pickup point for me. I was doing an excursion and it was at Fort Montague and that's a place where taxis don't really run. Um, and I kind of asked the guy before I got out of the, the taxi because I was like, this place looks a little like, am I going to be able to get back? Like, okay, I got to ride there, but how am I, how am I going to get back? And he was like, yeah, yeah, this is kind of a hard place to grab a taxi. And I was like, were you going to tell me that? You know, I had to kind of like put two and two together myself before I got out of the taxi. He was like, well, you're going to have to call me back because this is going to, this is a rough area of, uh, to try to get a taxi. So if you like a taxi driver, you might want to grab their card because you're going to need a taxi. You're going to take a taxi at one point to get around, especially if you're staying at the Warwick and you want to kind of get around to downtown um, Fort Montague, uh, restaurants off the resort. So if you find a taxi driver that you like, make sure that you grab their number in the event that like you are stranded somewhere or you're at a place where you can't grab a taxi. Um, they can at least come get you or they can call someone else to come get you if they're off. So it does help to get someone's information um, so you're not stranded somewhere or if you're having a hard time getting a taxi somewhere. So excursions, I definitely want to recommend that you buy your excursions online before you get there. I use Viator. I'm not a sponsor at all. I'm just telling you, I get all of my excursions when I do any trips from Viator. Um, I recommend doing that versus trying to get your excursions on the resort at Concierge where they're going to charge you like double, triple for the same thing that I got online for like a quarter or a half the price. So I just have to like stress that. And I get a little bit, it grinds my ears when I see people like buying that stuff um, at the at the resort. But I'm like, well, you can just like definitely like go on buy a tour and like, you know, get the same thing for half the price. Um, so that's just like my tip for that. Um, when I was there, I did a food tour. I did swimming with the pigs and I did Atlantis. Atlantis, you have to buy through their website, like, I guess, you know, they, they, they got hit. Like, you definitely have to buy it through them. Um, but the pigs, um, that's a popular thing to do there. And then also um, the food tour. Like, I recommend doing all three of those. They were all great. Um, but the pigs and the food tour, I got off of Viator.com. Do get your stuff through there. Do not get it at the resort where they're going to charge you, like, double and triple. I mean, it's insane what they're charging people. Um, so that's my tip for that. Your ride to and from the airport, I definitely recommend not taking a taxi, setting that up before you get there. So I went on Viator.com, um, and I set up my return and my departure, um, ride. So, and I use Charter. They're not a sponsor once again, but they were great from start to finish, um, they were just thorough. The, the guy called me, texted me, kept me informed. Um, they were great. So I used Charter for my return and my departure ride to and from the airport. Um, and I had to leave pretty early. Um, I had to leave at like 5 a.m. to get back on the plane to get back home. So they were like calling me. They were there. They were texting me. They were just amazing. Um, and then I actually had got all my little tips and tricks. I was like putting everything in my on my note um, in my phone because I was trying to take down all the things that he was telling me. He was just trying to just give me some tips and tricks like before like I arrived to the hotel, which I was so grateful and thankful for. And I just like kind of knew some of the things to expect. So I used Charter all via tour for my ride there and back. But you don't have to use them for your, your ride, but just make sure that you get your ride through a Viator versus trying to get a taxi when you land to get to your hotel. It's just easier and you're probably going to spend less money having your rides already set up before you get there. So I also do my rides through Viator and my excursions through Viator. Just saying. To check out the rum factory there, it was definitely like tasty, amazing. Um, you can get like a four pack or you can get like a six pack. The four pack is what I got. And it was um, four for like 22 50 
and then the six pack was like $38, so closer to $40, but they are really good. You can pick the flavors. Um, we actually went to the Rum Cake Factory, and the cakes are really good, and you can taste the rum in them, so like definitely worth checking out if you're like a rum person um, or if you're a cake person. It's really good. So Bay Street is a very popular area where people kind of roam and check out um, downtown kind of area. It's where you can like buy all memorabilia, shops, food, that kind of thing. The rum cake factory is down that way. So definitely we're checking out. I want to mention that you should definitely check out the straw market if you're looking to buy like memorabilia. Um, there, It's basically like a bunch of vendors there and you can kind of negotiate with them um, pricing a little bit if you get the right vendor. Um, I recommend buying from there or someone kind of on the street than trying to buy merchandise at the hotel where they're going to charge you double for the same merchandise when you can go to the straw market and probably get it for half or negotiate the pricing a little bit. So definitely we're checking out the straw market if you're there looking for memorabilia. So there's no ATM at Warwick. No ATM. Um, if you don't bring enough cash with you, this is why I'm harping on the cash thing, just making sure that you're bringing enough cash with you because there is not an ATM at Warwick. The closest ATM is at Atlantis. And Atlantis is, you know, a cute walk. It's about 15 to 20 minutes um, if you're walking briskly. Uh, but if you're looking for, like, you know, to get some quick cash, you're going to have to go to Atlantis for that ATM. And let me tell you, it's a, it's a $50 minimum that you can pull out at Atlantis ATM, $50 minimum. And there's a $5.60 charge to pull that out. So I, I spent like 55, 60 basically. And I didn't even wanna pull that much out, but the minimum you can pull out at the ATM there is $50. And then there's a $5.60 fee. I just want to make sure that you are aware of that. At Warwick, it's going to look like there's something in the corner in the lobby that's an ATM, but it's not an ATM. I tried to use it and the lady was like, oh, well, this is like for island pay. You can basically get like some kind of prepaid card on it. Like it's, it's weird. It's, it's only for like a prepaid card, but you cannot pull cash out of it. But it looks like an ATM in the corner. So I just want to warn you, it's not an ATM. It's like some kind of thing where you can get like a prepaid card or something. So the closest one is Atlantis, which I think Warwick really needs to kind of like get a grip here. I mean, people need cash. They should definitely invest in an ATM on site. I shouldn't have to walk all the way to Atlantis for an ATM. So that was kind of like frustrating for me. So I just want you to like bring enough cash or you're gonna have to go to Atlantis and pull out a $50 minimum, plus be charged $5.60 to use the ATM. So just telling you. If you're a gambler, a casino person, um, there is a shuttle that will take you to Atlantis to check out their casino. And their casino is nice. I did go to Atlantis for an excursion. I got a day pass. Um, but you won't be able to get past the casino if you don't have a day pass there. They check. There's somebody like standing there, like watching and making sure that like you're not getting past past that point. So just so you know, you do need a whole day pass to go through Atlantis, the entire Atlantis, if you um, would like to check it out. But the casino part, anyone can walk in and go. So there's three restaurants that require reservation. I do recommend you make your reservations basically as soon as you hit the resort because the bookings can go fast. So um, they have times of 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Those are the two dinner times. So you have to kind of pick which one you want. I'm a late dinner person myself, so I always did nine. The three restaurants that you need a, a reservation to, it's called Ting's, T-I-N-G-S. It's an Asian-style restaurant. The other one is Abiacho. I could be saying that wrong, but I'm going to spell it for you. A-B-B-I-O-C-C-O. -C -C um, it's an Italian place. And then, and then there's the Edgewater. Edgewater was my favorite, hands down. I went twice. Um, it's a steak seafood place. Um, and as you can see in my other video, like I posted a picture of the steak and the rice and the potatoes. They, it was great. Um, at Abiacho, I got the salmon. Um, so, you know, it was basic salmon and, and rice with some kind of like mushroom sauce or whatever. I didn't really like care for it, but um, they do have like actual Italian stuff. There, I just didn't want any that night. Um, but that one looked okay. Um, Ting's, 
I got like orange chicken and fried rice. It wasn't, it wasn't all of that. It was kind of like eh, meh for me. Um, but those are three restaurants that you will need reservations to. There is a all day, there's two all day. Well, there's one all day place. I'll say one. Um, it's called Veranda. Um, that's the all day place. So let's say you don't have dinner reservations. That's where you can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner there. Um, so that place is kind of like open most of the day. So they close at like three o'clock and then you have to eat at um, Chikarni's, which is outside. So Veranda, they're open for breakfast and they close at like three. And if you're hungry at that point, you have to go over to Chikarni's um, which is outside near the pool. But their food is actually good. I like it better than Veranda's. Um, I actually, at Chikarni's, I had got the jerk and I had got the hellfire chicken. To me, the chicken was not that hot. I love spice, so the chicken was not that hot. But if you're, like, sensitive to spicy stuff, it may be hot to you. Um, to me, it was just, like, Red Frank's hot sauce, if you ask me. Um, but it was good, though. I got that kind of almost every time I got hungry around that time with some fries and they have other stuff too. Just check out my first video. You can see, I took a picture of the menu so you can see what they have. Um, but those are basically the restaurants that are available. Um, but the three I mentioned earlier, you do need reservations too. So there's no beach. It's more like a marina. They There was an attempt to try to like make a beach on the side, um, but you can tell it's like a man-made beach. So if you're someone that's looking for a beach, there's not one too far. Um, there's one called Cabbage Beach and it's beautiful. So I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, I'm a big walker. So walking, it was like 15 to 20 minutes depending on the pace that you're walking. I walk pretty briskly. So um, it was it was fine for me, but some people have an issue with, with, with walking. So the resort actually, they have like four different times where they pick up and drop off to Cabbage Beach. So don't worry if you're not a walker, but if you are a walker, it's cool, you know, to get some sun and hang out and just walk there yourself. Um, but they do have like times, and I'll put them, um, of at least, this is June, 2023. So I can only speak for like now. Uh, it may change, but um, I'll put that, I'll post that. Um, but they do like offer a shuttle and they, it's like on the, on the hour, it's like, 10:45 or 12:45. It's I'll put it, but um, they do offer like a shuttle there and back. So no beach like on site, but you can drive or walk to one. I have to touch on the pelicans, um, <laughs> birds, pelicans, whatever they are, right? They're like everywhere. Um, it bothered me, it bothered a few people I could see like in their faces cause like the pelicans would get so close and I guess they're always hungry. So like, they're just like everywhere you turn, there's one, like you're trying to eat your food and they're just, they're just right there and don't leave your plate. Cause they'll like swoop down and like get some food and like fly off with their friends or whatever. So like the pelicans, they're disrespectful. I'm telling you right now, like you're gonna be like, oh my goodness. Like they're just like everywhere. And it, it, there's nothing I guess you can really do about it, but it was kind of like bothersome a little bit. Cause I was just like, there's just all like, the fly on your table and walk, walk around. Like, you know, it was just like, oh my goodness. But the pelicans, they, they're something else. They're special about that. If they're pelicans, birds, whatever, the birds were like coming down and like getting on my nerves and like a couple of other people. So just know that they're, they're there, they're, they'll swoop down and they'll take it off your plate and they'll, they'll fly off. So just be prepared. Um, they can be a little much. So there's one centralized pool. There's just one big, like weird shaped pool um that everyone kind of just hangs out at the chairs are very limited so if you're a beach a pool person not a beach person if you're a pool person you definitely want to get out there a little early because the chairs go quick and i mean quick because it's kind of it's not very big um so you're kind of limited with with the chairs I didn't really necessarily need a chair. Uh, if I grabbed one, fine. If, you know, I didn't really care that much. But some people, like, they go out there to lay out by the pool. So if that's you, get out there early to grab your chair. 